Have you ever done something I was like, hey, it's gonna take 15 minutes, but then it takes three hours? You've broken your knuckles, you're bleeding everywhere, sweats in places that it shouldn't. Well, you might be a car guy. Here's what we're working with today. I have the subframe. Yes, I pulled the subframe. I have the subframe out because as you know that we do have to weld the diff and then I'm going to put these condor bushings in the subframe and the diff. The way I'm gonna do that is I have this little ball joint press set. Basically, this should press some of these out right now. I tried to do these two and it uh, just pressed out the little center pieces. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to burn these out, but I got a torch. This, I feel like is a necessity, no matter what you do. Heating up the actual bushing is probably the easiest way. I know a lot of guys will heat them up and then they'll bang them out with a big old hammer. If I can't get these two bushings burnt out, then I'll just heat these, these up and just hammer them out. So today's objective, bushings out, subframe cleaned up, diff out, axles off, weld the diff. Actually, I probably might take it to a guy. I might attempt to do it. We'll see. <laughs> and then get these new bushings in here and get the subframe back up. This gives me a good opportunity to address the rear of the car, the height of it actually. And then I actually broke this, the nut that actually holds on the rotor. So I need to get that on there. I have a replacement. I bought them a while ago, I just never done it. So hopefully all in all, this should be a long and busy day, but it will be a productive day. Okay, I just removed the drain plug for the diff, and I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be more fluid in there than this. And it's like, it just like drizzled out barely. Axles are disconnected. Some time ago, if you don't remember, I stripped that bolt on the rotor. I finally just replaced it. <laughs> so that's good to go. I'm gonna get to burning these out now. Probably gonna take the diff completely out and do that one outside of the subframe so I can get access to that one right there. And yeah, let me just close her back up, but that's wild. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be more than that. That could have been bad. I feel like this entire car has been one giant curse. This better be worth it. I just wanna take this thing, sling it around a couple corners, drive it home. That's it, if the BMW gods can look at us now. The diff is out, I'm gonna start burning this bushing out and hopefully it does something if not oh well just make my job much harder bitch i can just like heat this bitch up like this everybody loves fire all right i'm gonna burn these out watch them burn boy let me work i need a fan ventilation and i need this to fucking come out so all these to go once these are out i'll show you how to put those bushings in they're the condor bushings. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but probably wearing a lot of black stuff on my face because guess what? I got all the bushings out. That was a task and a half. I don't want to do that again. Here's the aftermath of half of these bushings are just demolished. Dude, I had to, I don't know. It's probably an easier way. Yeah, these bushings are jacked. Some of them came out okay, but Basically, when I was using that press, it ended up pressing all the centers out instead of like pressing it all out together. Just was a pain in the butt. Um, but they're out. I cleaned up a lot of the holes and then I lined them with some lithium grease, some rust protection. You know, these are probably going to be pretty solid in there, but I'd like to make sure that this subframe doesn't rust any more than it needs to. So this is the condor bushing it's a two-piece design i believe this is the rears and this rear setup is yeah this is the rear setup so that goes into this one here on this side it has a chamfer well it's got a little lip on both sides oh that only goes one way i'm guessing this can go from the bottom because then the nut will tighten it so this one, basically, ow. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the what's gonna happen. Micah Diaz put this in with one hand, I watched him. Me, I need a hammer. So this goes in one way, and I'm pretty sure this is the bottom side that goes in like that. 
because then the bolt gets pushed up to it and gets sucked up to the top. If it was here, it'd just start pushing out. So the bolt side is this side. And I'm assuming that's how that works. These ones also have a lip on both sides, but one of these is thicker than the other, if you can tell, on the top and bottom. We'll have to figure that out. But with movie magic, movie magic, look at that. They're in, looks good. So a little side note, the bushing has two sizes to it, each one of them. One has a smaller, thinner side, and one has a thicker side. So the thinner side keeps going down at the bottom, and the thicker side is definitely at the top for all of these. The bushings are in, that is done. I'm glad, thank God. Now it's time to move on to this diff. I gotta clean this thing out. I've already taken the bolts off. Let me see if I can't open it with one hand. Oh, it smells like douche. Oh man, that is a grimy differential. But I gotta clean it out and then hopefully can weld them gears together and then we can have a welded diff with a drift car. I'm gonna spray this with a bunch of, well actually I'm gonna make sure it's empty first. Hang it up over this. And then if it's empty, then we can go ahead and spray it down with some brake clean, light it on fire, and run out the way. Because when we weld it, I don't want it to catch on fire. Well that was uneventful. I sprayed it with brake clean, cleaned it out. I'm gonna take it to my guy. He most likely will weld that. We'll put the subframe in tomorrow, and then we'll wait on the, the rear diff. I'll take him the exhaust and the rear diff so we can kind of knock both those out. What's going on guys? Back again for another day on the BMW E46 drift car. And today we're gonna work on finishing off the rear suspension and making this normal BMW to a drift car. This will ultimately stiffen up the chassis and make it handle unbelievable. We have some new parts today. What we have is some FDF rear lower control arms and some part shop max spherical um, R tab bushings. So these two components are gonna finish off the subframe. And when we finish this off, we'll be able to install it back. I have the diff being welded right now. So once we install these remaining parts on the subframe, it should make this BMW a completely different animal. So in typical fashion, I don't have all the tools that I need, but I'm gonna make do with what I got. Because guess what? That's what we do. I've already installed this one, so I kind of know the process. It's pretty straightforward, and these went in surprisingly easy. So the tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a screwdriver, most likely the flathead, because that's what has to screw this on. We need a hammer. Usually you would use a mallet. Again, I don't have. Some WD-40, a little C-clamp, and a couple pieces of wood. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this piece in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the, the bearing inside of the, I'm gonna set the bearing in there and then I'm gonna use the C-clamp and the piece of the wood to actually pull it through. Food for thought, this outer ring piece that actually clamps on goes to the outside. So don't forget to do that. Let's take this one off. Oh, already dropped it. But this is just gonna go in just like so. I did put some WD-40 on the inside of the metal here, just to give it a little lubrication, a little bit, should be a little bit easier. And if like, I probably didn't even need, these went in so easy. Look, this is like a block of wood and it's going right in. All right, let me use this, let me pull it through. Literally just like a little C-clamp. It'll pull it through most of the way. It's, it's literally this easy, man. This bushing goes right in. All of like 30 seconds. All right, that's as far as it's going. And then if you have a rubber mallet like you should, like normal people, if you have a rubber mallet like you should, normal people, it should go in just like that. See how easy that was? We take this little ring piece, tighten it as best as we can here. Then I'm gonna take a hammer and my flathead, and I'm going to tighten it by putting my flathead in there and tighten the ring all the way down. All right, it's starting to get tight. All right, so that's in. Oh yeah. One of two pieces that we have left on the car. I'm gonna swing this thing up because I'm gonna put in the rear lower control arms. 
So let me get this up in position. We're gonna put the FDF rear lower control arms on. Luckily for you, I said that we were gonna make the best drift suspension on our E46. So we moved on to the rear lower control arms from FDF. It's a pretty straightforward process. I've already elongated them to kind of match the old stock flimsy. Like this is literally like, I can move this with my hand. This is just junk. This is, look at it, you can even hear it, it's like hollow. With these solid pieces with those, uh, look at those solid freaking bushings in there. So we're gonna put these on the car. It's pretty straightforward. You have an 18 millimeter bolt on each side and we just remove them. And literally these things will just pop right out with a little maneuvering. They're gross, they're nasty, and they're brittle. So we're gonna replace these with these bad boys. Should be pretty good. I do need those stock bolts. Now don't I? Oh, let's not do that one. That one don't have any bushings. All right, let's start with one side and move on to the next. I don't even know if you can watch me do this. These just pop on. Put another washer on. These are probably the next bushings that I replace on this. Maybe even those upper control arm ones. But for right now, I think this is the best of all worlds. We have Condor subframe bushings, and then we have Condor diff bushings here, and then we have Part Shop Max R tabs or rear trailing arm bushings, and then we have these FDF nice rear lower control arms. Alrighty, so that completes the rear suspension. Um, this should improve drivability drifting, the rigidness of this vehicle, and we should be able to do something cool with it, man. I was watching a bunch of videos on even tread wear and tire wear, and the most, most of the guys are saying that you need these to have a more even tire wear. The name of the game is to let the tires last as long as possible when we're out there just learning. I'm excited, I hope you are. Go ahead and give a thumbs up on the video. Comment down below what you wanna see on the car. We still have to decide on a body kit. The exhaust has been made already. The body kit is the next biggest project on the vehicle besides the tune. So let me know what you think we should do here. Maybe a click tuning, OEM plus style, maybe a DTM fiber works, maybe a Street Fighter LA kit. I'm gonna do something wild or I'm gonna do something simple OEM plus, plus give us a little bit more room in the back and the front. I haven't decided yet, but when I do, you will be the first to know. Let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, sub, tell your friends, and we'll catch you the next one. Peace.